Alabama, Auburn uh, ticket, not uh, Pantaloosa, which I almost said, but Auburn, Alabama tickets at the end of the year. Coach Willie, Friday night, big ball game. We was real concerned. I know last week talking, me and you was talking a lot, real concerned about our injuries, how we stack up against Greenville. Greenville had lost uh, one game, and that was a big 6A school, and we worried about we might be out man and all. But, Coach Willie, I can't say enough for the out Bobcats. They really got after Greenville. Well, I appreciate that, and the coaching staff cannot say enough either. Uh, we were concerned going in and the fact that we were limited in numbers. Uh, the injuries had taken away a lot of depth, and as you know, last week we had to change up our defense. We had to pe put people in new offensive spots and uh, go with the offense we thought we could handle uh, in five days' work time. And we went out there, and for instance, Jason Mack weighs 183 pounds, was playing in front of a 327-pound offensive tackle. So this is the kind of effort we had from everybody on that field the other night. They just laid it on the line and played great football for us. And, Coach, I noticed that I, I was sitting there in the stands, you know, all night long, I'm sitting back, and I reckon I was concerned Friday night a lot because I know how the situation is when you've lost a lot of injuries. And you know that you got people, that we talked about it, that you know everybody has injuries and somebody's got to grow up. Some of these younger people got to grow up and say, hey, it's my time and we're going to step in there and we're going to do a little bit of playing. So Friday night when the game started out, I noticed that uh, uh, Greenville got a quick touchdown or so and then uh, uh, went ahead of us and it looked pretty bad the first quarter. And so I kind of got a little worried about how the game's going to turn out. But Coach, I guess about the midway of the second quarter, it looked like the Bobcats caught fire, and I think from the middle of the second quarter on, it was all Bobcat football game. Just take, to really and truly get back to it, take one or two or three plays away, we whipped them pretty good. That's right. It came down to uh, for a quarter and a half, like you said, we had to constantly adjust on the sideline. We were, they were pulling a big old guard, and we knew they were going to pull him every time that they had a trout, and they were just cutting us to ribbons with that trout. And that big old 63 was just demolishing us on the backside. So we changed up our strategy in the way we were playing in about middle of the second quarter. And everything kind of settled down. Uh, we had two linebackers back there Friday night that had never played in those positions before. We had to take an out two outside linebackers and put them inside. And Brian Jones ended up Friday night with 13 tackles. And... Uh, you know, he played a tremendous ball game. And then uh, Boot Thompson came back in the second half and played a tremendous ball game, along with those down people up front. And we had taken one of our inside linebackers and put him outside. And uh, all of it turned out well, and we played hard. And I, as I went out on the field there for our last time out, I looked, and our linemen and our backs were sweating and bleeding. And... Uh, uh, you know, you felt sorry for them, but at the same time, they sucked it up, so we were fixing to take it in. And we missed one block. They brought a stunt in, and we missed one block. If we hadn't missed that block, I truly believe we'd have beaten them. Coach, I do too. And, Coach, I, one thing about our defense really came back, like we said, from about the second quarter on and played their hearts out. And then our offense against those big old defensive linemen of Greenville, the Bobcats, especially in that fourth quarter there, when we had to have the drive, they took the ball, we fumbled the ball, they take it in for a touchdown, and then the game, we could have very easily said, well, hey, here we go again. It happened to us again, but the offensive linemen, I guess they got together, somebody did, got together, and they decided we are going to take the ball down the field, and they did it. We carried it down the field 80 yards. Well, not quite 80. We carried about 77 yards. And as I was figuring up the offense uh, off a chart today, and Ricky Moody had gone back and done a chart on it. We had almost 80 yards more offense than we had against Greenville last year. This is the best offensive output that we've had against Greenville since we've been here. Uh, and we didn't realize it, but uh, when we broke down last year's film, we had a hard time moving the football on them last year. We were fortunate enough last year to cover a fumble on about their nine-yard line. And for the last three years, these have been three of the most fierce fought battles that I've ever been around. You are playing Greenville, now they are a big physical team, and each year it has been a hard, I know that in the last year was probably one of the hardest hitting games that it's ever been, and the year before last too, and then again this year we had another big ball game with them. That we did. Coach, we'll get, take a time out here, and then we'll get into the Friday night's action with the Out Bobcats and the Greenville Tigers. All right, we'll get into action as the Out Bobcats coming on the field, and back at home, Coach, it's always nice to be in 10 LE Stadium. Another good crowd Friday night. We like to play at home, and uh, of course everybody does. And we told our folks if they got the 
opportunity to take the football. You know, we like to get the football first, but uh, they want to toss and chose to receive, and they get a, uh, we get pretty good coverage on this uh, first one. But man, they cut us up with about four or five traps. They open with a trap. That fullback is tough. We stop him here, but you're going to see them start trapping here very quickly. Ball on 26 yard line, second down. See, there's a cross trap right there. I believe that's Shea Horstead making that tackle. 38 yard line, first down. All right, there's the fullback again. You remember he gave us fits last year, and he got another year. He sure did. He's second down and one yard. Go. We had good penetration here, and we miss him, and he gets that big first down. We had him in the backfield, and we let him out. All on the 46-yard line, first and 10. There goes that fullback again. He is quick. Now they have some big plays here in this first quarter. But we, like you said, about the middle of the second quarter, we settled down and got things in control. Need to hurry up and get this quarter over with. Well, uh, you, the trap is a big play, and it has given us trouble. You know, when somebody can really trap with big linemen, it's hard to stop. Here's another trap, and that's going to, that one doesn't hurt as much. The fullback trap that gives us the most trouble. They go to their eye formation. This is the first time they've done that, and we wish they stayed in the eye all night. Mm. Now, that's just hard running. We had about uh, three missed tackles on that, but they had a clipping back here, I believe. I saw the flag fly. So that brings it back to the 40-yard line. They, this is a repass, and we'd seen this thing before, and the thing is, they never throw it unless number five is in the game. And uh, so when we saw number five, we just flew straight to him. All right, we hold him on 45-yard line, fourth down, Greenville punting. Here again, we didn't realize, see, we've lost Cam Pierce, and Cam was our receiving man. We had to replace a lot of things. This affected our kicking game. We were lucky here. Mm. We fumbled this first pitch, and that could, uh, we almost gave it right back to him. Second down, 10 on the 15-yard line. And uh, we had a hole there, and we just couldn't quite seal off that outside linebacker. We felt like the trap would be there run the out pass, which we find out is open later on. We knew from the word go we were going to have to throw this football some because you can't muscle over people as big as they are. So we'll put the ball and they'll get it first down right at midfield. There goes that trap again. Shea Horstead making another game saving tackle back. He made about five of those. First down on 27 yard line. They just keep running it, coach. Oh, they're going to run it. And we knew they were going to. This is nothing we hadn't worked on all week long. We just couldn't duplicate their side and quickness. The same trap coming back to the other side. Of course, we're playing on those inside positions against them with people who weigh about 170, 75 pounds. We have good uh, pursuit here, and we cut him off at the pass. They try to sweep. They're back to the I formation. It's their throw information. Uh, of course, we were looking for the pass in this situation. Now it's third down. They try to run the trap out of the eye, but it's just not the same. So they go up for a field goal on fourth down. This one's close. Of course, we had one of those close ones on them last year. After the score is three to zero, Greenville favor. Coach, it really didn't hurt us on anything. That drive there, just kind of noticing it, except the trap. The now, trap. Everybody, everything else, we stopped. You're going to see that the trap is a thing that hurts us all night long. That's their best play. We watched them in a film. We got Shea Horstead running on a quick pitch. They hurt Carol. They beat Carol of Ozark with that play. This was a little old cross trap, and that's hard running, but we didn't get the block on the corner. So that's the end of the first quarter with a score of Greenville 3-0. Uh, 
All right, here we go. Now we're going back into the uh, second quarter. Got a big completion here. That was Brian Jones, and we used him a decoy a lot in the second half. My gosh, when we looked at uh, at halftime, we looked here. Here's another one coming across. That's Neil Preston. Uh, Brian Jones was being triple teamed. Now this is one that they get right here. Uh, and now this is a touchdown run. It's a full back just like they did us last year. Watch your trap. He's gone. He's upfield right now. Boy, he hit through that quick, didn't he? They trapped our down lineman and our linebacker got sealed off. And he can put it in the end zone in a heartbeat. And then the extra point's no good. So that's nine for Greenville, zero for the Bobcats. From here on in, though, Coach, I believe we and We outplay them the rest of the way. We sure do. This would have been an easy time to have folded the tent. We almost made another crucial mistake there, but here again, we're having to put young and different people in positions, and the only way they can get experience is in a game. There's one thing, that play right there, we got, we got away with it, Coach, and came out of there, but if you're watching TV this weekend, Florida State lost the ball game on that right there. That's that, right. And that's major college people that's supposed to know what they're doing to every play. That's exactly right. Here, got another completion in here to I believe that was Eric Cox. You notice we're not bashful about throwing it because we knew that we couldn't move these big people. Now this is a play that we put in just this week and that is the very best football play we have all night. We run it over, this one. We run that play over and over and over again. Shea Horstead making about a 35 yard run there. All on 29 yard line, first down Bobcats. That's Demetrius Womack. Uh, Demetrius had played very limited up till this week. And Demetrius did a good job at fullback. We had to move Boot Thompson to right halfback. And uh, so we had so many people in different spots. Now that's one thing we were not able to do. We couldn't just overpower them. Another good gainer here on a tall sweep. I believe that's a first down again. About the 15 yard line, 16. We had a chance to complete that one. Second down. They had penetration then. Uh, they, they blitzed. We'll go to our trip set to spread them out. Go back and go to the other side with it. And that was fourth down, Coach, and we'll turn, turn it back over to Greenville. We moved the ball real good during that Yeah, time. we brought it on down the field about 65 yards. Now, we play better defense. You know, that's the same trout that they'd been hurting us with, but we've moved our linemen around, playing a little different here. We're back on the quarterback here, and this brings up a third down. They and their passing set have brought their passing ends in. We got him pretty well covered, and they got a punt to us. Fourth down. Now, I believe this is a drive we're fixing to start that we just use all the clock up in the first half. So this is Brian Jones back having to field punts this week, and he gets it back up field. Ball on the 37-yard line. All right, we took it. That was going to be a boot pass and got the corner and made pretty good yardage on it. And up and gain 10 yards and make a first down on this play. Make a first down with the length of football. All right, ball on 27-yard line. First and 10 for the Bobcats. Good block by Demetrius Musgrove. Second down. Another good block by Demetrius. Brian Jones comes up with a big catch here. We spread them out. The 
come by a blitz, but we run a quick hitter up in there to Musgrove, and he knocked that thing on in. Inside the five-yard line. Matrix, too, he's going to have to pick those big feet up a little quicker. Get down close to the goal line, ball on about the one-and-a-half-yard line. We moved the line back in that shot, and the Matrix uses his strength and knocks it on. Bingo, in the end zone. Extra that looked point. good, but it wasn't. Looked good. We thought it was good, but it was not. So that's nine to six in favor of Greenville. Now, we don't understand this one, but we don't care. As long as he's throwing it in stands, he can't complete it downfield. <laughs> so we don't care whether it's a receiver over there or not. And the referee didn't throw a flag or anything. Now, I have seen a lot of, I guess, can you? Now, there was no receiver there. I don't know what you can do there, but I didn't see a receiver, but that was a half. Anyway, that's the end of the first half. The score, Greenville 9, up Bobcat 6. Third quarter now, and the score is 9 to 6, and we get the ball starting in the second half. We really wanted to do something with this drive. Uh, get a pretty good return. That's Kenneth Edwards running back up in here. We thought at halftime we could uh, get that ball in there and run it right up to one hole, but now we hit that too wide. I believe this is a tall sweep, and we let penetration get in here. Get some yardage out of it, but we have motion on this next play, and I never did understand what the fish was called. Uh, they, never, I, they never did make it clear. They, did, they uh, never did blow the whistle or never did call anything. It should have been, the whistle should have been blown. We it thought it was a five-yard penalty and they'd get the play over. But they, uh, we couldn't get an explanation. They just said it, that's the way it was. <laughs> now, there's a trap they come back with, but. Uh, oh, my goodness. He fumbled out. That's one of those you like to catch in the air and run them in. Not right back, ball straight up landing right back to their receiver. We thought then, and that, now see, there's that trap that killed us the whole first half. There it is again. They just keep coming back to it. Man, we Bingo. were ready for this screen. Whew. We've seen that screen in all their films or their first other games. We knew that was coming. Fourth down, Greenville Putton. We had three people on the quarterback and one all over the receiver. We made them punt this one over. They were in mo motion, and we almost blocked that one. That's pretty good. We catch the ball, run, and let it roll. Now they hit us late, so we got 15 more. First down at the 45-yard line. Tall sweep. Had a good block, and Shea Horstead does a good job of running. He goes to the house with this one. He took that into the house, turned around, looked around, see where everybody's at. See if he need to run any faster. <laughs> and so that put, now we're going for two points. A pretty good block to have a boot. We just didn't quite make the corner. So now then the score is 12 for the out Bobcats, 9 for Greenville with six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Twenty-four yard line, first down, Greenville. Yeah, we back on the quarterback. We uh we're playing pretty sound right along in here. That's where I got to enjoy the defense, but we got the swarming coach and I love to see a lot of people around that football. And that's something we hadn't done this year, you know. We work on it and work on it and emphasize it. Now that's a play that has hurt us here since before time, and that's that jump pass. They'll come back in a minute, but they fumble it the next time is wide open. And we work on riding those ends every day, uh, but they still hurt us with that pass. Here we got back here on him again. That was going to be a counter option. We had good penetration. There it is again. When we hit him this time, we get the football. First down, 48-yard line. 
pretty good field position. And we move the ball. That's that play I was talking about. It was our most successful play, the, uh, the way we were blocking it in the middle. Picked up another first down. That's good running by Demetrius. Things looking good now. Come with the option and we can offer that option block. But you gotta give them some credit. They're pretty tough. I believe we're fixing change over in the fourth quarter. All right, that's in the third quarter. And coach, that was fourth down there. Well, that was a play that we were just talking about. I cannot see how we did not make a yard, but that didn't. That's a big play right there by Kenneth Edwards on a one-on-one -on -one tackle. That's great. That's what we got to have. But uh, we thought we made that first down. This is reverse, and we miss him right here. But we still keep him in check pretty good. We knew that play was coming. Now that looks a lot better on stopping that trap. Go. Fourth down, Greenville punting. We feel real, real good right here. And we come up with what we think is a good, safe play right here. The one of our two best plays of the night. With tall sweep, it's in, the hit, and there's the ball pops loose. So Greenville has the ball on a 30-yard line, first down. Now they got that fullback loose in there again, and that one a trap. That was a option read. It's still an option. That quarterback, quick as a hiccup. That's pretty good tackling. He tried to go airborne then. They got a big run off on that. First and go. It takes them four downs to get in, doesn't it, Coach? Yes, it does. They, uh, we play in hard, pretty hard defense here, and um, they get a penalty on third down for movement. We have good penetration then. This is third down here. They two up moved. Yeah, they moved. So get it over, and they first of all are coming here and run, fake the blast, they hit the blast, come back around, and there it is. And we took the fake. They brought their passing in, in, and we were hollering pass, pass, pass. But you know, it was just one of those things. He had to make a fantastic catch. So with 4:15 remaining, it's 15 and 12 in favor of Greenville. This is where, Coach, we have to do something with it. We've got four minutes to do something and two timeouts. We come back with our best play. We knock it apart, and he almost broke it out of there. I think we run this about four times in a row. We kept getting big holes and good running. That was their spot that we found out that they were, we thought they were the weakest. Right at the bubble. Another first down. Three in a row, Coach. And that makes the fourth. And we have a big play here, but we get movement. Yeah, I see, that's for some people in new place. He wide open out there on the swing, get several yardage. But we had two people moving, so we got a five yard penalty. As Eric Cox went up and made a fantastic catch. He did catch. So we're in business now, first down. You can see the goal line will come with a tall sweep which was our second best play, and we're getting down there knocking on the goal line now. Second down, inside a 10-yard line. Well, down to the five-yard line, third down.
Last fourth down, ball inside the five yard line. All we needed was about oh. two feet and they we missed fired. one block. They fired through from the back side then. Yeah, and we were looking for that and that, that wrapped it up. Mm, that was a tough one, Coach. That's tough. And that's the end of the ball game. 15 for Greenville, 12 for the Out Bobcats. All right, Coach, we, all we can say is that was a tough one. Went right down to the wire, and that's what the, the fans, you know, you go to see a good, uh, hard-fought football game, and we took it to them. The boys never quit, got behind, came right back, and took it to the wire. And, and like you said, we ran the plays that we thought would go, and, and make one block, we win the ball game. That's right. We were one block away from winning the ball game. Let me bring something up here because people may be wondering why we didn't talk to any seniors at halftime. You're looking at the reason that we're not talking to seniors. This old man just forgot it. We have a different week this week, and we had our quarterback club fed our people tonight, and the minute they ate, they all got up and left and went home, and it never crossed my mind until I started walking up these steps that I didn't have any seniors here to talk to us tonight. Hey, Coach, that's what you was doing. You're sitting there feeding your stomach on that vase with that uh, big steak. And I, I see Judy in there. You didn't want me to tell her this, but, you know, she does not used to feeding you steaks and feeding you good. And tonight you're really eating good. And I think you're mad with her for not feeding you like that, right? Right. I'd like to eat that way <laughs> every day, you know. Hey, I was kidding, too. I was kidding. I don't want to get him in trouble because he's, he's well taken care of at home, I guarantee you. But Coach the Booster Club did fed him some mighty good steak, and uh, it was a uh, good meal tonight. Well, tell me a little bit about now what we've been doing this week because of open week. Well, what we decided, you know, last week we had to take uh, our offense and revamp it and our defense and revamp it, and as it was obvious in the first quarter, we still had some things that we weren't uh, totally secure in. So this week we told the boys instead of having those long practices like we normally have, we were going to have four short practices and we're going out in pads every day and not one of them has complained about this because they're wanting to get better. And what we're doing this week is teaching fundamentals. We're going back just like we're in spring practice, and we're working on fundamentals on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball, and we're trying to uh, help our young players develop this week. We're trying to get several quarterbacks in position to play if they're needed in the game. We would have been real, real short-handed Friday night if anything had happened to Keith Foley. Uh, also, we're trying to get some depth established at linebacker again. You know, the injury just took our linebackers out of there. So what it amounts to right now is when somebody goes down, somebody else has to move. You know, Coach, that's one thing you said earlier about the boys not complaining. A lot of people hate these open weeks because you've got to do a lot of work. But you said the key word to it. I noticed some of these colleges, too, that have started off slow and then things have picked up. If you want to get better, there's not but one place to get better, and that's on the practice field. That's right, and, and I don't know but one way to get better. I just don't know how to get better blocking against dummies and going out and helmet shoulder pads and shorts. You know, I don't know any way <laughs> except getting to better except to be more physical. And uh, we get a lot less people hurt when we're out there really getting after it when we're doing out there going about halfway through the motions. And uh, it seems to have been enjoyable. And we told them what we're going to do Thursday is we're going to have a two-hour practice and we're going to have uh, a specialty period for training. And then we're going to have a defensive period where Rick Moody and I are going to set up Pike County's offense and uh, Johnny Grimes and uh, Eddie Hill and uh, Chris Bowden are going to take the defensive people down and we're going to have uh, a Pike County day. They're going against Pike County offense, then we're going to turn around the last half of practice and go against Pike County defense. All right, Coach, let's take a quick break, and then we'll get back and find out a little bit about Pike County. Thinking of buying or trading vehicles, think of Jones Ford. We offer great deals or trade-ins and we satisfy you with service after the sale. Let our friendly staff at Jones Ford serve your automotive needs. We're locations in Op and Florella at Jones Ford. For a few years, every house begins to show signs of wear and tear. When your house needs a little facelifting or touch-up, talk it over with the friendly folks at Op Building Supply for all your building supply needs. Stop by Op Building Supply on College Street in Op. The Dairy Queen, located on Highway 331 South in Op, is a place to go with a good deal on a good meal 
with specials each month. Freshly cooked chicken on order or 100% fresh ground beef. And blizzards of all type with all your favorite kinds of ice cream treats. So we'll go by the Dairy Queen on Highway 331 South. General Manufacturing Sweats Prefade and Southern Trim is proud to support the Op Bobcats and the Op High School in its many functions. So good luck to the Op Bobcats from General Manufacturing located in an industrial site, Sweats Prefade on Sanders Road and Southern Trim on Highway 84 West. All right, we're back. <laughs> Coach Willie now, he's just kind of uh, he's trying to figure out what we're going to do next week. Coach Willie, uh, uh, Mike Russell was just talking to us and coming in here, and, and Mike had a little surprise for us, and uh, I think we're going to have a good surprise for you next week. All you former Bobcats and everybody that played on the Bobcat team in the last few years, you might want to tune in next Tuesday night. Mike Russell, Coach Willie's going to come up with one of the games that we've played in the past, so we will be on uh, next Tuesday night, and we don't tell you which game it is. So you just tune in and see. It will be one of the big wins for the Op Bobcats since Coach Woolley has been here. So it's going to be a big thrill for you next Friday or next Tuesday night. Tune back in, and we'll have a good ball game for you. All right, Coach Woolley, now then we're, we're back where we want to be. Our next two ball games, I guess it is, going to decide whether we're going to the state playoff or not. We want to know when area, and we've got Pike County and Delville, which is probably – Two are the better, are the best, I would think, the best 4A teams in the state, and we got to play both of them. That's right. Uh, I was looking at the ranking, and somebody, I had an old coaching buddy ask me, and they said, that, well, you, you're stupid to have the schedule you got, and to get in this area, you were double stupid. And, you know, I think he's <laughs> right. But it didn't have any uh, choice on the area that we got in, and we've got Pike County coming up. And since the present coaching staff has been here, I don't know of any – bigger game that we've ever had coming up than the one with Pike County. Out of the past five years, Pike County has won the state two of those years and been in the state finals one other time. This year, Pike County has a tremendous fullback. It looks like we're just going to turn around and play Greenville again. They play the basic same defense that Greenville plays. They play that 4-4 defense, and uh, they have as good a fullback as there is in the state of Alabama. Uh, he's about a 215 or 20 pounder, uh, number 42. They have a quarterback who runs the option very well, and they have a tight end about 6'5, about 225. These are their three best, and then at one of their halfbacks, they have the state 100 yard meter champion playing at one of those halfbacks. On offense, they uh, run the wishbone, they run. Uh, the one back set and they run trips they run a lot of the same things that we do so uh we are looking forward to this game and we know how big it is and this is one of those times that we really need the people of op to get out and support us in this game because we need a crowd here coach that's right and going back i think pike county's lost two ball games or maybe three but they haven't played anybody but enterprise dothan you fall, and they have played a tough schedule, and so they have been in tough competition, and so uh, they'll be ready for us for playing that tough schedule when they get here. Sure, they had not played but one team in 4A. They opened the season with a win over Smith Station, which is a big 5A school. They beat Smith Station? They beat Smith Station the first game well, of the know, year. Well, I know where Smith Station beat somebody real big this weekend. Was That's that right. Auburn or who was it? Auburn. Uh, so, you know, they've got a good football team, and their losses have been to – like you said, Dothan and Eufaula and uh, um, Enterprise. Enterprise. And, you know, these are good football teams. And the Enterprise game was 35 to 22, and the one with Dothan was somewhere similar to that. So they can score. Hey, sure can, Coach. And I know it's, uh, like you said, people think about the crazy part about it, but, you know, it, it's hard to believe that you can be in 5A one year and drop down to 4A and play a every team you play probably in 4A were tougher than the teams that you were going to play in uh, a 5A. In 5A, we feel like we've been no problem at all going to the state playoff, and now then we're going to have to fight it, fight for our lives just to make the state playoff. Well, you know, last year's third runner-up in 5A was Fayette County, and they have one of the best quarterbacks, the coach's son's quarterback up there, and uh, he's considered the premier quarterback in the state this year. They've lost the last two weeks. So, you know, they dropped down from 5A to 4A, and I really and truly believe there are more good football teams 
uh, across the state in this division as in any other. Now, don't take anything away from Blunt and your Gadstons and those kind of people, but uh, when you take a whole cross section, they're just a lot of good 4A football teams. And I know one thing, we got two of the toughest in our next two weeks. But like you said, your last comment a while ago was now, we're going to give the fans a lot. Now, that gummit. We've come out here and we worked hard. Our players worked hard. These football players have worked themselves to death. And they, like Coach said, that they're hungry and they want to win. And that's why they're working hard and they're not griping and complaining. So we're going to give everybody an op one week rest. You don't even have to go to ball game in Andalusia or Elba or Samson or Florel or, or wherever. You don't have to go to ball game this weekend. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and go. But you don't have to. You take one week off, take your wife out to eat, Feed her real good, take her steak or whatever, and then next Friday night, we're going to play Pike County at Channel Lee Stadium. Not this Friday, but Friday week, we're going to play there, and we're going to expect everybody in op to come on out to Channel Lee Stadium, close your businesses down if you've got a restaurant, close them down, then tell them you'll be open right after the game. And we're going to all be back and go, we'll all go out and eat then after the game. But as Friday night week, we want everybody to be in Channel Lee Stadium and op. Put us through where we can go on to the state playoff, Coach. We're looking forward to it, and uh, like I said, this is a mighty, mighty big game, and we're going to work and do everything in our power to be ready for this one. All right. Coach Foley and I are going to take next Tuesday night off. He's going to get a little rest, go ahead and have practice that afternoon, and he'll be able to go on home and relax a little bit. So we're going to take next Tuesday night off, but you be here. Don't forget, next Tuesday night, there's going to be a film, a playback of one of the big ball games that's been here since Coach Woolley has and that we've played. And so be here next Tuesday night at 8 o'clock for Coach's Corner. That's it for Coach Woolley and old Randy Griffin. Good night.